This is Siddhan Ganga Parwala presenting Guided Constraint Policy Optimization for Dynamic Cut Beta Robot Locomotion. Reinforcement learning based legged robot control solutions have demonstrated robust locomotion skills even on complex physical robotic systems, as shown in this video clip. Although reinforcement learning, or RL, has witnessed significant contributions from researchers to address issues such as sample inefficiency and hyperparameter tuning. The inability to perform a formal behavioral analysis on controlled policies trained using RL make these approaches less appealing for use in real-world applications. Furthermore, no hard guarantees on constraints implies that RL methods cannot be used for safety-critical operations. As a solution, we introduce a guided constraint policy optimization technique to train an RL control policy for the task of quadrupedal locomotion in order to track user-defined reference-based velocity commands. We formulate this RL task in the framework of a constrained Markov decision process, represented by the tuple shown on the current slide. Here, S represents a set of states, A, a set of actions, R, the reward function, B, the state transition probability function, and mu, the starting state distribution. A CMDV augments the Markov decision process with a set of cost function C and limits D. In order to solve the RL problem, we introduce a performance measure as shown on the current slide. Here, pi represents the control policy, tau denotes a trajectory dependent on pi, and gamma represents the discount factor. For a CMDP, we further define the expected discounted cost return, as shown here. For a CMDP, policy iteration using trust regions can then be defined as the optimization problem subject to cost and KL divergence constraints, as shown here. As a trust region optimization method, proximal policy optimization, or PPO, introduces a clipped objective, as shown here. In our work, we extend this PPO objective to a CMDP formulation by introducing the constraints on the cost return and refer to it as constrained proximal policy optimization, or CPPO. In our experiments, we observed that performing policy iteration subject to cost constraints in our environmental setup required significant training samples. As a solution, we split our CPPO approach into approximated CPPO, also referred to as ACPPO, and hard CPPO, or HCPPO. The ACPPO objective is shown on the current slide. After training a narrow policy using ACPPO, we perform HCPPO such that only those policies which obey the cost limits are sampled. While performing preliminary experiments, we observed that introducing even basic costs as approximations of constraints and the reward function significantly impacted the behavior of the policy. Based on this observation, we introduced three degrees of constraints in our environmental setup, referred to as soft, hard, and no-go constraints. Soft constraints are included as part of the reward function. These need not be critical for safe operations. Instead, these are introduced in order to direct policy search towards a desired behavior. Hard constraints cannot be violated and are included in the set of cost functions C, as defined in the CMDP tuple. No-go constraints are introduced during training, such that when these constraints are violated beyond a certain threshold, the training episode is terminated to prevent exploration around regions which do not contribute towards policy optimization. While training our policies for the task of moving forward with maximum feasible base velocity, we observed that even for the same training parameters, but different actuator models, we obtain significantly different locomotion behaviors, as shown in each of these simulations. In order to reduce the reality gap in a simulation environment, and to obtain a control policy which could be visible on the physical robot, we introduced an actuator network in our physics simulation in order to approximate the dynamics of the actuators present on the real robot. To train a control policy for the task of tracking user-defined reference space velocity, we set up our RL environment with a state space represented by a 109-dimensional vector comprising of the robot's base height, base orientation, linear base velocity, angular base velocity, joint positions at current time step, desired joint positions at previous time steps, joint velocity at current and previous time steps, and the desired linear and angular base velocity. The control policy outputs a 12-dimensional action vector comprising of the desired joint positions. We use a multi-layer perceptron with two hidden layers comprising of 256 and 128 nodes as a control policy. As part of the reward function, we introduce reward terms 
which minimize the error in the robot's linear base velocity and the desired linear base velocity, the joint torque required for locomotion, error in the robot's angular base velocity and the desired angular base velocity, acceleration of each of the feet, slipping of feet when in contact with the ground, the deviation of the joint positions with respect to the previous time step, and the orientation of the base with respect to the gravity line axis. While performing experiments for this environmental setup, we observed that using the conventional unconstrained learning approach, even with an actuator network, required precise reward function tuning, without which the control policy obtained was not desired and often impractical, resulting in locomotion gates such as pronking. Therefore, in order to refine our environment setup, we introduced limits on the joint speed, acceleration, and the eligible regions of the feet with respect to the robot's base as part of this soft, hard, and no-go constraints. We additionally introduced the desired foot clearance for feet not in contact with the ground as part of a soft constraints. In case of hard and no-go constraints, we further introduce a limit on the distance between the zero moment point and the robot's base position as a stability criteria. We further introduce a limit on the number of feet in contact with the ground to avoid locomotion gates such as bronking. In order to reduce the samples required for policy convergence through exploration, we use reference trajectories generated using a whole body trotting controller to warm start a control policy and to direct policy exploration. We do this using a supervised learning approach and refer to it as guided policy updates. We then perform constrained proximal policy optimization and then alternate between the two as training progresses. We collectively refer to this as guided constrained policy optimization as presented on the current slide. It is important to note that while performing guided policy updates or GPUs, we only infer an underlying oscillatory joint motion. We do not regenerate the reference trajectories, instead only use them to direct policy exploration. For this reason, the reference trajectories need not be generated by perfectly hand-tuned controllers. Behavior obtained by simply performing GPUs is as shown here. We improve upon this behavior using policy exploration done using constrained proximal policy optimization. In our experiments, we observed that training using GCPO results in convergence towards a desired locomotion policy with higher sampling efficiency and without the need for precise reward function tuning. Using only CPPO, we were able to obtain such a locomotion policy with less than 1.8 billion simulation samples. After introducing GPUs, we obtained this locomotion policy with less than 470 million simulation samples. In order to make the policy robust to unaccountable factors in the real world, we added noise to the states and actions during training. We also randomly scaled the output of the actuator network, randomly changed the mass and size of robot links, introduced actuator damping, and changed the simulation step time. We successfully managed to transfer our policy trained in simulation to the real robot and observed that it accurately managed to track the reference velocities even on uneven terrain of varying properties despite having been trained on flat ground. Compared to the whole body trotting controller used as reference trajectories, our control policy required less torque and was also better able to track the user-defined reference base velocity commands. Moreover, the control policy trained using GCPO was better able to handle constraint violations even on the physical robot compared to the policy trained using PPO as represented here in the kernel density estimate and the scatter plots. Our GCPO policy was also able to handle external forces of up to 100 newtons for one second duration when applied to the base horizontally. We emulated a weak actuator by reducing its position tracking gain and limiting its output torque and observed that our controller was still able to track the base velocity commands with an RMS tracking error of 0 0.1975 meters per second. Despite significant inertia scaling, our GCPO controller was able to track the base reference velocity commands with an RMS tracking error of 0 0.2214 meters per second when we set the acceleration due to gravity to 1.62 meters per second squared in simulation. In this work, we presented the guided constraint policy optimization method to train an RL control policy, which obeys the necessary safety critical constraints. We demonstrated the robustness of our control policy in simulation and on the physical system and experimentally validated the performance of GCPO.